In this example, we have two identical reactors. Each are carrying out zero order gas phase reactions. And we're assuming also the rate constants are the same for these two reactions. They're isothermal, same pressure and temperature. Molar feed rate to each reactor is the same. Essentially, everything is identical except in the second reactor, the reaction of one mole of reactant forms two moles of products. And the question is, which reactor has the higher concentration of reactants at the exit? So an important part of this comparison is that the reactions are zero order. And though this may not be practical for most reactions, it's useful in understanding the behavior of the reactors. So what this means is that the rate constant times the volume would be the total rate of reaction in each reactor. And the total rate of reaction is going to be the same for each reactor because K is the same and volume is the same. So that means the flow rate of M leaving is the same as the flow rate of R leaving. So at the exit, the molar flow rate of M equals the molar flow rate of R. However, the fact that we form two moles of P for every one mole of R to reaction, this reaction means there's more moles leaving reactor two, and therefore the reactant R is diluted more than in the first reactor. Namely, the fact that at the exit of the first reactor, the molar flow rate of N plus N, N equals the initial molar flow rate. For the second reactor, it's different because of the increase in number of moles so that the molar flow rate leaving is larger and therefore the mole fraction of R which is FR over F total, which means FR plus FP, which is then, of course, FR over 2, FR0 minus FR, where we use stoichiometry here to determine the total molar flow rate. So this Y sub R is going to be less than Y sub M, which is FM over F. M0. And so, because this number is smaller than this number, the concentration of M, therefore, is greater than the concentration of R, because the mole fraction of M is greater than the mole fraction of R, and the pressure and temperature are the same in both reactors. Therefore, reactor 1 has the highest concentration of reactant. In this problem, we're looking at a tracer problem that we want a qualitative solution for. So we're going to feed tracer into an ideal CSTR. And what we're going to do is have a step function input. So the concentration at time equals zero jumps up to one gram per liter. We feed that for two minutes, and then we turn off the tracer. And so it says draw just approximately on this same plot, what the outlet tracer concentration is going to look like as a function of time. And it gives us the reactor volume is 10 liters, and the volumetric feed rate into the reactor is 2 liters per minute, which means the resonance time, which is volume over volumetric flow rate, the resonance time for this reactor is 5 minutes. So if we're only adding tracer for two minutes, we don't reach a maximum in tracer concentration before we stop the flow of tracer. So the first thing we can do is calculate how much tracer we added in two minutes. And that would be the feed concentration of tracer times the volumetric flow rate times the time that we add tracer. So I've substituted the values in and the units cancel. We end up with four grams that are added. So if none of the tracer left, we've added 4 grams to a tank that has a volume of 10 liters. This means the maximum concentration we could have is 4 tenths of a gram per liter. But we know material has left. And so we could estimate this. It, it says only approximate plot. So we could say the concentration in the tank times the volumetric flow rate times the time. This would give us an estimate. Of course, the concentration in the tank is changing. It starts at zero. It ends at 0.4. So let's take an average of these two. And so that gives us an estimate times the same two liters per minute 
and the same two minutes. So approximately 0.8 grams left. We added 4 grams. So 4 minus 0.8 means we have about 3.2 grams in the tank, which means our estimate of the tracer concentration at 2 minutes is 3.2 grams over 10 liters or 0 0.32 grams per liter. So the concentration in the tank would increase and starting at zero would increase to about 0.32. This point we shut off the tracer. Now it behaves just like a pulse input tracer. In other words we're going to see exponential decay and the concentration is going to decrease exponentially e to the minus say t minus 2 over tau type behavior and this then is an approximate estimate of what we would expect to see now we could get an accurate value if we were to solve the differential equation so the differential equation would be the volumetric flow rate times the change in the tracer concentration with time this corresponds to accumulation term now we have volumetric flow rate in times feed concentration minus volumetric flow rate out the concentration in the tank where CT0 is equal to 1 gram per liter for T between 0 and 2 minutes and then it's equal to 0 for T greater than 2 minutes. And so we could solve this differential equation and when we do here is the numerical solution. Notice the concentration is just slightly higher than 0.32 and we have the exponential decay here and of course the scale the y-axis scale is different from this plot but it has the same shape of increasing to a maximum than an exponential decay.